Lake Erie is a cornerstone of the Great Lakes region. The lake provides drinking water for 11 million people, and millions more visit its shores each year. But the lake is sick. Every summer, blue-green swirls move across its surface. Seen from above, the sweeping curls paint a bizarrely mesmerizing picture of alarm. On this, the shallowest and warmest of the five Great Lakes. Like clockwork every year, toxic algae blooms across Lake Erie. These harmful blooms are the biological result of a host of nutrients that are allowed to run off the land and into the water, thanks to current laws and timid regulation. Farm fields are a particular source of these nutrients, which in turn lead to some of the worst water pollution in the country. Circle of Blue spent five months examining the issue, interviewing dozens of farmers, state regulators, advocates, and scientists. This investigation found that, with a few exceptions, billions of dollars and years of binational commitments have done little to quell the pollution. In some cases, the problem has only gotten worse. According to assessments by five federal agencies and every state in the Great Lakes Basin, Lake Erie is among the country's most visible examples of waters fouled by toxic blooms. This systemic ecological threat, accelerated by climate change, is a growing and critical public policy challenge. Last year, the Environmental Working Group, a Washington-based research organization, counted 476 harmful algae blooms in 41 states, five times higher than in 2010. Some of America's most iconic waters are contaminated by algal blooms. They include the Chesapeake Bay, Lake Okeechobee, Lake Champlain, and California's Clear Lake. Lake Erie is at the center of the worst water pollution challenge in the country. The failure to curb nutrient pollution in the Lake Erie Basin is raising water bills in cities that are already struggling with water affordability. In Toledo, Ohio, monitoring and treating algae blooms costs the average family of five $100 per year. And the city is already battling affordability issues. For poorer residents, water rates are far outpacing income. Between 2010 and 2020, Toledo's water rates shot up by 150 percent, while income of the poorest quarter of residents has risen by only 19 percent. Despite these daunting numbers, it is entirely possible to end toxic blooms. In fact, the U.S. did it once before. Billions in funding from the 1972 Clean Water Act limited phosphorus discharges from wastewater treatment plants and cleared up algal blooms on Lake Erie for almost 30 years. Why did they come back? In short, a change in agriculture. Farms got larger and more industrialized. According to the most recent U.S. agricultural census, the number of dairy cows in Ohio and Michigan more than doubled to 1.6 million from 1978 to 2017. The number of hogs in both states climbed to 3.7 million, almost 700,000 more than in 1978. In Michigan alone, dairy and hog farms spread fields with 4 billion gallons of liquid manure and 400 million tons of solid manure according to the Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. Farm runoff and operations are largely unregulated under the Clean Water Act. Anything farmers do to slow runoff and reduce nutrient discharges from their fields is voluntary. The money behind efforts for limiting runoff pollution 
is not enough to attract farmers to participate. And as Circle of Blue found, in some cases, programs meant to reduce agricultural pollution only made the problem worse. Today, agriculture is the primary source of nutrient pollution to Great Lakes waters and the principal cause of the region's harmful algal blooms. In order to end this scourge, scientists and environmental groups say that farms must significantly reduce the amount of phosphorus draining into the water. That will require extensive changes in how the nation produces food. It also means far greater accountability by the farm sector, along with new regulations and significant increases in public investment. In other words, there must be a powerful shift in how America manages its production agriculture. Experts across the Great Lakes region and around the nation have developed what they believe to be promising solutions that could also apply to algae problems globally. Blaine Baker is a fifth-generation dairy farmer in Clayton, Michigan, who is exploring some of those options. With our, with our manure system, the, the liquid portion and the solid portion, uh, we'll talk liquid here first, the, the sub-irrigation system, um, we're running the, the water, which is, is quite, quite bland. Uh, there's not a lot of nutrients in it to start with. It goes from the storage pit to a man-made wetland, which is, again, for purification purposes. Once it comes out of the wetland, it gets pumped into a closed-loop system, it's called, pumped into a tile system that's totally closed off to the, to the creek. Um, anytime we're pumping, any extra water that goes into that system gets pumped right back into the system. So our, our uh, probability of water escaping that system and uh, getting into the creek is, is very, very minimal, very minimal. We're 100% no-till, we're 100% cover crop, so those two practices there go a long, long way on eliminating uh, potential runoff. The, the cover crops out there are sucking up the nutrients. And, and then part of it too is, is filter strips along all the ditches. Filter strips across there, if anything is heading towards the creek, you've got that 40 feet of, uh, of grasses growing there that are gonna slow it down, absorb it, pretty well stop any of it from hitting the creek. The problem, according to Baker and other conservationists, is that most farmers won't make changes if they don't have to. This year, 45 Lenaway farmers were invited to join a multi-year project that involved drastically reducing the use of nutrients or even cutting fertilizer altogether. The arrangement included the provision that if reduced nutrients resulted in lower harvests, growers would be reimbursed only Baker and four others agreed to sign up. There's a powerful resistance to oversight from the $1.1 trillion a year U.S. farm sector. That and surprising public tolerance to nutrient pollution have made toxic blooms a hazardous mainstay of shoreline communities each summer. It will take an equally potent and enduring force to rid Lake Erie of its ills with a change in agricultural practices. Still, solving harmful algal blooms may be less of a stretch than just a few months ago. This year, when the U.S. Congress approved legislation to rebuild infrastructure and reduce climate-changing emissions through expansion of clean energy and electrified transportation, it showed fresh resolve to fix systemic challenges. As the world struggles to grow more food in a warming climate, it will use more water and more fertilizer. Researchers say the Great Lakes could be a hub for solutions to a growing crisis that threatens water supplies for hundreds of millions of people. <laughs>